go again, Happy Campers. Another What's episode up? of Geeking Out here. I'm Spike. This is Chris. Today we've decided we're going to do a little bit about uh, our favorite toys growing up. Oh, yes. So we've each compiled basically a top five list of things that we wanted to talk about. Uh, and we'll go ahead and let Chris do his because... He's been wanting to do this for a while, so we'll go ahead and let him start with his top five. Can you think of what your top five was off the top of your head? Well, first of all, I just want to say, you know, everybody has those special toys growing up. We, you know, we didn't have a whole lot growing up. So, I mean, I played with rocks and sticks and things like that, and he did too. So, we, we had some toys. So, I'm going to go with my favorite ones first, all right? So, number one would have to be definitely the Ghostbusters toys. Now, I was, I was huge into Ghostbusters. So, like, the movies, uh, the cartoon series, loved it. I was a huge, huge, huge Ghostbusters fan growing up. Even had the glow-in-the-dark Slimer toothpaste. Yes, that did exist, and it was awesome. But I ended up getting Ecto-1. I had the firehouse. I had, the, of course, every single character from Ghostbusters that if you pulled like a little switch, certain things would happen, you know. They would turn into weird things, I, which I never actually understood that at all. But it was very, very fun. Loved it. So Ghostbusters was all the way. Okay. So he's going to start with Ghostbusters. I'm going to start with, for me, an honorable mention here, the Rubik Snake. Rubik Snake was the follow-up that, uh, I believe it was Enzo Rubik was his name. Oh. That was his follow-up to the Rubik's Cube. And the Rubik's Snake was just basically a series of pyramids that were stacked against each other. They were able to rotate essentially 90 degrees at a time. So you could make various shapes out of them. Of course, it would normally make just a big, long, straight piece. And you could make little snakes out of them. You could make a cobra if you were so inclined. Uh, most people made a ball out of it at one point or another. There was a number of different things you could do. Not that many, but it was the fidget spinner of its day. Now, in five years, by about 2024, nobody's going to understand that reference. Yeah, welcome to my world. Nobody usually gets my references anyway. So I'm going to lead <laughs> off with the Rubik's Snake. You go right ahead with your, your next one here. So I see your Ghostbusters and raise your Rubik's Snake. What do you did? All right. Well, of course, another thing that I was into, of course, was Batman. I'm a Batman fan. Always will be. I will die a Batman fan. And I will fight anybody who says Batman sucks. Well, he did yeah. suck before 1989. Okay. Adam West's era thing. Was... Adam West did not suck as Batman. The deep sea comics from like 1970 on did not suck until you got know, about 1980. They they kind of petered out. I give you that. I give you but that. Sticking with the toys. <laughs> well, I remember having, of course, the Batmobile, the Bat Plane from Tim Burton's 1989 Batman movie. Loved it. I had so much fun with that. And, of course, as you can see right here on the table, Batman. That's him. But I had all those plus, of course, Joker, the Penguin, the Riddler, all of those. That was just so, so freaking enjoying to just play with. And I even had like a Bruce Wayne doll that you can action put like action figure it's not a doll it's an action figure action figure sorry but anyway you put the bat outfit on him so you he can be Bruce Wayne or Batman either which one 
So Batman okay. all the way. That was a doll. That was number two. Okay. Now he's yeah. mentioning the uh, the Tim Burton Batman, and yet all the toys he has here, this one, the one he's got hiding behind him right now, are from the animated series. This yeah. for me, there's two bat Batmobiles. Okay. There's the one Adam West had back in 1966. And then there's this one from the animated series, which was like 1990 on. This is actually my favorite Batmobile that they have ever made. Movies, everything, this here was, to me, was the top one. <clears throat> this one is from the Batman the Animated Movie, Mask of the Phantasm. This one will... He wants to tell you about it, but he's just so fanboy right now, he's squeed out. Yeah. So, so Batman, Batman for him. Okay, I'll see your Batman. I'll raise uh, you an easy bake oven, buddy. Eat. Yes, real Oops. men had an easy bake oven. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, he's laughing about it right now. This man does not fix his own food. Okay? I don't know him. I don't Ask know the him. beloved wife, who's the, who's the chef in the family. The extended family, it's me. And it's because of the Easy Bake Oven, buddy. Now, you can, I can sit here, I'll sit here and I'll laugh at global warmers all day long. Okay, if you're going to sit here and preach to me about climate change, I'm going to laugh in your face until I just start coughing phlegm all over you. <laughs> but, anyone who doubts that we needed to replace the 100 watt bulb with the, at least the halogen... Preferably the CFL, and beyond that, the LEDs. I was baking cakes over a 100-watt bulb in about five minutes with an easy-bake oven. That was the one that taught me to embrace my inner chef. For that, I don't care who says it was a girl's toy. Up yours, buddy. I'm secure enough in my masculinity. Easy bake oven for the win, but that's still not my top toy. Go ahead, big boy. There's no way Easy Bake Oven can top Batman I, or my, my. I beg to differ oh, yeah. because who who cooks the Thanksgiving dinner every year? The beloved wife takes the lead, but. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Go okay, right ahead. Okay, Go right okay, ahead okay. with your next one. Go I got ahead. to admit, you do make some great cinnamon buns. Easy bake oven. I now, have now, the hottest buns in town, boy. Don't you ever forget that. Now, I, I right got to admit, I got to admit, I did try the easy bake oven a few times. I don't know if it was yours or if it was Jerry's or sister, but I tried somebody's. That was And it Jerry's. was, they, the, the cookies never came out the way it showed on the Dang commercial. So, who, whose would that have been? Would I have served you in uncooked cookies? <laughs> that was Sister Dearest. Okay, what's oh, your next one on wow. your list? What's the next one on your list? All right, so. Plus, <laughs> go ahead. All right, we're at number three, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, number three choice here. I am going to have to go with the Tonka Toys. I had, rock. I had a school bus and a trash truck. A trash truck, okay? And I, for some reason, I loved those things. I loved them. The school bus was about this long, coarse yellow. The sign even came out. The doors opened, and there was no roof to it. But that's where you can set, like, toys, you know. That's talking you know, tough, damn it. Talk of tough, and the trash truck I, was my favorite. I had this. Of course, I I think there's something about little kids loving trash trucks. There's just something about them. kids love big, love big vehicles and stuff. They yeah, love they this were stuff awesome. because they they see the size of it. They see how it functions, and it's their introduction to the world of engineering. Yes, it was awesome and amazing. And I every love those two every, I'll tell you this. I'm not going to say everyone. The majority of kids who had the hots for Star Trek guaranteed they had Tonka toys somewhere in their past. Mm. Yes. And Star Wars too, for that matter. But Star Trek was more for the engineers. Star Wars was more fantasy based. So that's one of the differences between oh, the two. True. Uh, so come on, so bring it. Before I go to my next one, 
I kind of struggled a little bit with this. I'm going to give honorable mention to the Spirograph, but only with a four-color pen. A Spirograph was the the big plastic thing. Had gears. The whole thing was about gears. Again, another engineering toy. But you would take a pencil or a pen. You would put it in a hole in a gear that sat inside a large plastic hole, and you could draw with this with your pen in the Spirograph and create radial. Uh, patterns. That was the whole idea. That's all the Spirograph was. It was about gears and the patterns they would make. It was mathematical for sure. It was okay with a pencil. It was all right with a pen. But if you got one of those four colored pens that had the blue ink, the black ink, the green ink, and the red ink, okay, you can find black, blue, and you can even find red almost anywhere, but green ink, buddy? That was living high on the hog right there. So just a quick honorable mention for the Spirograph. My number three, though, lawn darts. The old school lawn darts. I had, ever since this fool over here first <laughs> brought this up, I had to have lawn darts on here. You would not, this. not the modern ones, although they can cause damage. Give them that. They've got weights on there, and if you manage to hit somebody at the right point upside the head, you're still doing some damage. But the lawn darts actually had the little points on the end that would dig about three inches into the dirt just to hold them in place. The idea so was who fun. could land them closest to the middle of a hula hoop. That was lawn darts. Beautiful, lovely thing. Still miss them. Understand why they're gone because people are wusses these days. If you're too stupid to stay out of the line of fire, I consider that natural selection. So. You know what? I you know I agree. I am so with you. And it's like, you know That's a shame. Well I mean, today's toys, they just don't do justice. I mean, like for instance, have you noticed that uh girl toys are teaching them to get pregnant and have kids? Like seriously. There's dolls out there that literally pees and poops and says, Hey, I'm hungry. So they can learn to take care of it. What the hell's wrong with you people? I'm going to say something on that one. Okay. What's that? I'm getting. I'm thinking about starting up a, a new series of videos just on my own. I've got three rules. Okay. And the first rule is going to be there is nothing new under the sun. The idea of peeing and pooping dolls that goes back to our grandparents, buddy. <laughs> Any. Actually, this goes way way back. Anybody who's ever had a stuffed doll and tried to fit a functioning bottle into its mouth, it wound up peeing one way or the other. Okay, that whatever was in that bottle was going to wind up coming out the bottom of that thing at one point or another. Okay, even if it was de not designed that way, even if it was just full of wadding and stuff or cloths, it was still the liquid was still going to work its way through. So there is nothing new under the sun on that one. Pregnant dolls, nothing new about that. They've been using that in place of actual sex, sex education for years. But, but I will, I will grant you about it's still kind of dealing with those kinds of things. It is. But so. anyway, all right. Number four on my list is... Oh, number four, number three, number two. Oh, you're at number four. That's right. Number four, yeah. He's going you're, from number one to number four. I'm going from number five to number one because we oh. cannot agree on anything. That's, That's all right. right. Go ahead. All right. So one of the toys that I found very special is a toy that a lot of people did not have, and that was a boomerang. Yes. I loved this boomerang. I had a whole lot of fun and a whole lot of trouble with this thing because... Did it come back? Yes, it always came back. But it was either aiming for my head or aiming for the rooftop. So there was a lot of concussions. Uh, there were no concussions because we didn't he didn't have a heavy enough one to induce concussions. But I will concede this. It was hilarious watching him throw. I was certainly entertained by him trying to throw a boomerang. Ha, 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 ha. All right, go for it, man. Okay, next up on my list, bicycles, okay? Nothing. Mm. 
Nothing separates you. Nothing transitions you from childhood into adulthood like a freaking bicycle. Main reason, once you get a functioning bike, you are no longer tied to your house or to your neighborhood. You finally have a taste of sweet, sweet freedom. And believe me, there's a huge difference between riding a bike, just getting up, grabbing a bike, and going, and getting as far away from your messed up family as possible, and having to put on the little helmet, and the knee pads, and the elbow pads, and the tooth guard, and all this other crap <laughs> in order to climb on a bike. No. Good time. Real Good kids, time. climb on a bike and go. Like I said, yes. anything with the potential for injury just to increase the play potential. Yes. Jumping things, building ramps and trying to jump them, even though you know it was dangerous, but who cares? I mean, back then, kids nowadays have no idea how great it was because, I mean, if you stop and think, and you're our age, do you remember racing home before the street lights came on? We did. I, rem I remember finding a nice, long, long uh, uh, ramp. Not, a, not necessarily a ramp, a hill. You want a hill with a nice straight piece, nice straight away, and just start at the top and see how fast you're going by the time you hit bottom. By the time you hit bottom, especially if it's like a quarter mile ramp, like a bridge in the viaduct in Mount Sterling, Kentucky. If you don't know what it is, look it up. To be able to start at the top of this thing in the middle of the night when there's no traffic and just hit it as fast as you can get your little legs a pumping because you're probably doing about 15, 20 miles an hour by the time you hit that. Yes. You start going downhill, and I mean, this is like a 40 degree angle. You're going down by the time you hit the bottom, you're doing about 45, 50. You're breaking speed laws by the time you hit the bottom of that hill. Fortunately, the, that's why the police located, wound up locating at the end of that bottom of that hill, that and to put the. Uh, the drunks out of business downtown, but yeah, I, I mean, see. the bicycle for me, my number two, dude. That that is a great choice. I mean, bicycles. I you was the cool kid if you had a can on your wheel or a thing to flapped against it every time you rode it, or hell, even if you had a light on the front of your. That was, bike. I would say that was the difference between being a kid on a bike and a teenager on a bike. Because, yeah, some some people used cans, some people used cards. So they could hear that sound like a motorcycle. Once you realized the importance of stealth when you were on a bike, then you became a teenager. <laughs> okay, uh, real quick, let's hit your last, let's hit these last ones. We need to wrap this episode up because we're closing in on 20. We are trying to make these shorter, I swear. <laughs> Try to keep this to 20 minutes or thereabouts. Yes. So, go ahead and wrap up your last one. All right. My last one is, of course, a goodie and has been a goodie, well, since caveman days. And that is the radio flyer. The radio flyer. The old... The old red rag Little itself. red wagon. Yeah. Yes. You could put anything in there... Put it on the uh, back of your bike. Have somebody carry you anywhere if you're like in the back of it or just run, get on top of a hill and just go straight down it with it. You do so much with it. It was so much fun to have those. And it seems like they never tear up. It just seems like they just keep going and going and going to where you can just pass it down through generations and some people have but these things will never get old that's a it's, that's a good call it's i good. like that the best thing you can possibly do with the little red wagon or any of its uh spiritual followers put a little brother in it and shove him down the hill at the side of the house he keeps getting up but by golly <laughs> you keep trying okay so well i found you for your number your one my number, number one, one. For me, best toy of all time. The stick! Yes, it's the stick. It's stick, it's log, it's log, it's big, it's heavy, it's wood. Log, it's log. It's better than bad, it's good. I love the stick. Listen, didn't grow up in the wealthiest of families, I'll say. But that doesn't matter. Even if you're the richest kid in the world, you find a stick. By God, you got a playmate for life. 
That stick can become a sword. That stick can become a Gandalf staff. That stick, mm -hmm. that stick can start mowing down weeds left and right. You're just felling orcs left and right. Gotta love a stick. And moreover, when your butt got dog tired at the end of the day, that stick was holding you <laughs> up till you got home. So, yes. and best of all, combine that with my number two, the bike, and you could do some damage, buddy. I oh. tell you, in a fight, nothing better than a bike doing four yeah, miles an hour with a stick. Just wham. <laughs> that was a great and Don't want to use that on, on uh, mailboxes, though. So don't do that. See, I remember. That, those hurt. And you wind up off the bike. The, trust me, the mailbox is going to win that every time. <laughs> every time. Not that that's the voice of experience telling you that. But, so, but, we're going to wrap that up. Last words. I, 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 I love a few of your choices. Great job on those. Mm -hmm. If you guys... Look, I know if you're a nerd like us, some toys are left to keep in the package. I mean... Come on. No, I, I mean, no. but sometimes you just got to. You got yeah. to smell. If, you, if you've got something mint in box, you don't have a toy. You, you have, have you have an anal retention problem. It, Take that stupid thing out of the box and play with it like it's supposed to. Dom Connett. Woody and Puzz would want you to. Remember ah. that. Yeah, I went there. I went there. Nice. I have so, that. So, until next time, I'm Spike. This is Chris. Chris. We will see you next week. Remember, take it out of the stinking box. Big balls. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>